we're out here in the wilderness. We're gonna hunt the great Karyo Vata, the shagbark hickory tree. I've got my weapons. I've seen my target. And we're gonna go get us some food. Are you ready? All right, let's go. Go hunt some hickory nuts. <laughs> hey everyone, it's your local naturalist Jess here with Story County Conservation. And today what I want to do with you is do a little fall foraging. What we're going to talk about are acorns, walnuts, hickory nuts, and how you can process those and actually eat them. Um, and you know, this is a great time to start watching squirrels because they're just so busy collecting food right now. A lot of the foods that we're going to look for today so are the squirrels, so are the chipmunks. They're trying to get ready for their, for their winter here. Sometimes you'll watch squirrels collect these acorns and they'll go off and they'll actually pretend to dig a hole if other squirrels are around, but they're, it's called deceptive digging. They don't actually dig a hole or bury the acorn. They just pretend so a squirrel thinks there's something there and then they go run off and hide their acorns somewhere else. Just totally fun to watch. I encourage you to do that. So the first thing I wanted us to discover today is one of the most underappreciated superfoods that's available, and that is acorns. Can you eat acorns? Absolutely. Humans have been eating acorns for thousands of years. It's actually an amazing superfood. So in oak trees, we tend to categorize them into two different categories, and we would say red oak, and white oak. The main way to tell the difference is by looking at the leaves to start with. So white oaks, when we look at this leaf right here, the edges are very rounded and lobed. And with red oaks, the edges are very pointy at the end. Now this is really important to know the difference between a white oak and a red oak because when it comes to processing your acorns, One's re gonna require a lot more work than the other. Red oak acorns have a lot more tannic acid, okay? Which means that these are gonna be much more bitter and white oaks have far less tannic acid. And that's why the, the white oak tends to be much more of a favorite for wildlife. Squirrels, deer, um, turkeys, they love to consume the white oak acorn because they are far less bitter. And what's pretty interesting as well with squirrels, and you're gonna hear me talk about a lot about squirrels today because they're my favorite animal and I just think they're fascinating, is squirrels have actually learned the differences between the white acorn and the red oak acorn. The white oak acorn squirrels will usually eat right away. They're sweeter, they're less bitter, but the red oak acorns, they've discovered that if they bury these, the tannic acid actually helps them preserve a lot longer. So when they're getting ready for the winter and they're needing to fatten up, they're going to start consuming these white oaks. But when their winter comes and their food is a little more scarce, they remember where they hid these red acorns and they know that they're going to preserve better so they can stay underground longer. And also by the time they're ready to eat, some of that bitterness has already leached out of the acorns, so they're ready to be consumed. But anyways, back to our acorns here. So when you're looking for your acorns, what you wanna do is you wanna find something that feels pretty solid. Sometimes you can even maybe hear a little bit of a rattling. If you can hear a rattling, that's probably not a very good acorn to use. It's probably rotten inside. You wanna make sure there's no holes. You want some weight to it. And the reason why you don't want any holes is a lot of times when these acorns fall to the ground, if they've been on the ground for a while, they start to develop um, little grubs that start to crawl inside. So for example, if we look at this, an acorn weevil has made its way inside and he's using the acorn to consume and then over winter and in the spring will emerge as a weevil. So a lot of different insects will use acorns for their larvae to develop, lay an egg in there. 
So not great for us to consume, unless you're in a survival situation, you could eat these, but that's not us today and I'd rather not. <laughs> um, so one thing that people do, if they do collect a lot of acorns to see if they're good or bad and save themselves time from having to crack them open, is they'll put all their acorns in a bucket of water. And if the acorn floats, that's a bad nut. But if it sinks, that means it has pretty good nut meat inside of it. So that's, that's a good way to see if, uh, not expend a lot of energy cracking open your acorns. What you're gonna have to do is a process called leaching. Now this is why it's important to know the difference if you have a white oak or a red oak. If you have a white oak, you might only have to leach the water, meaning you soak the acorn for a day and then change the water one to four times, okay? If it's a red oak, you're probably gonna have to leach them for a whole week. So meaning you would take your red oaks, you put them in a water, they would soak for a day, and then you would change the water the next day, change the water the next day, change the water the next day, until the water starts to look clear. That's getting all that tannic acid out so they're a little less bitter to consume. So Native Americans, what they would do is they would put all their acorns in a basket and they would usually just leave it in a creek and let that running water leach all that tannic acid out and they check it on it by the end of the week and then those acorns would be ready for the next step of processing. You will spend quite a lot of time doing this, which is probably why you don't see a lot of acorn flour on the markets. It is a lot of work, but totally worth it. Once you get that end product, you can make a beautiful flour, integrate it into cooking and baking the same way you do with other flours. And it has a lot of amazing health benefits. The tree that we were looking at there is called a shagbark hickory tree. And this is one of my favorite trees in the park and this also gives me one of my favorite foods in the park. So if you look at this tree, it gets its name from its bark and it's got a very, very shaggy bark. It looks like it's peeling away. This is a great tree for wildlife because of the food source, but also this bark is a great place for bats to actually hibernate. They can actually get under that bark and sleep there. And there's two different foods I like to get from this. First of all, it's the hickory nut. It's got a very, very sweet meat. And one way to identify the hickory nut is again, looking at the bark of the tree. But also, these hickory nuts have a hole around them that looks like this. It's very, very green. And it's kind of fun. You could find all the parts and put it back together, kind of like a puzzle. But when these are ready, they'll pull right out of the hole. And it has a very, very hard outer shell. And these are delicious, but you really have to work for them to get to that nut meat. So we're gonna try to crack a few open and we'll see if they have some good meat inside. Um, with all the nuts that I'm talking about today, that's putting them in a bucket of a water and seeing if they seek or float is the best way to figure out if it's a good quality nut. And foraging for nuts is a lot of work. Sometimes I'll just maybe sit in front of a TV, watch a show and crack my nuts and get my little nut pick out and dig them out. Sometimes I go outside and I'll process my nuts out there and it's funny because the neighborhood kids get very curious about what I'm doing and then they want to help so I bring out some extra hammers and we spend I kid you not my kid these kids and I have spent good hours just cracking open nuts and they think it's more fun than video games that is a direct quote from one of my kids this is more fun than video games so that's what I call a nature win so recruit your kids you never know So this one's a little hard to get out, which makes me wonder if it's not gonna be quite ripe enough, which means sometimes the meat will taste a little bit bitter, but we'll give it a try. So we've got some meat in here, but it's still kind of soft. Um, what I would probably have done with this one is uh, actually roast it and let it dry so this meat's a little harder, a little more ready, but I'm gonna give it a taste. 
Yep, it's still kind of sour, still kind of green. So this one is not ready. So you really want to wait until these are a little more black, kind of like this one, more likely to have a ripened nut in there ready to eat. Just let that one out. <laughs> Oop. I think we might have finally found our winner. We look at it, kind of looks like a brain inside when I peel this away. Kind of even has the lobes of the brain. And this is what you want, nice and brown, white on the inside, not too squishy. And a good flavor. This one's just a little bit early. What I would probably do is um, take some of these and set them next to a fire or put them in the oven and or just let them sit in a bucket for a little while. But overall, even being a little bit early, it still has a really nice flavor to it. These kind of have a, um, a very sweet, very rich, almost maple syrup flavor. And my favorite thing to do with hickory nuts is once I've gathered a bunch of them, is to actually put them in cookies, especially like snickerdoodle cookies. Really delicious. The last nut we're going to talk about today are the walnuts. Now this is something that most people are pretty familiar with, but just in case you aren't, I want to talk a little bit about them. It's a great, great fall food source. Um, to identify it, a lot of these walnuts, when they're growing on the tree, they kind of look like limes. But if you give them a smell, they definitely don't smell like limes. They have this juggling compound, which is where it gets its genus and species name. And it's a smell that you just can't really describe anywhere else. It, it's a unique smell of its own. Um, kind of bitter, maybe even kind of lemony smelling. That might be a stretch though. But uh, if you look at the leaves here, I'm just pull a leaf out. All right, two. <laughs> so if you look at the leaves, this whole thing is considered the leaf. These are considered called the leaflets. You can use this and you can boil these holes and you can make a beautiful, beautiful brown dye with them. And people would actually use walnuts and um, make their ink when they had the quill pens. They would use walnuts to develop that ink as well. There's also medicinal properties. So walnuts are very, very antifungal. So if you like to try to create your own natural solves and um, you know somebody that's experiencing ringworm or athlete's foot, you can actually make a wonderful sol solve using these as well. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna crack some open see if we can find some good meat inside. Um, if you find it like this, that are still green, it's not yet ready, but you can just store it in, the, in a bucket in your garage and once it turns nice and brown, that's a good walnut to try to, to crack open. So we collected a few along the way, so we're gonna crack open and see what we find. See, so this is a really good one. The outside's nice and brown. If I uh, feel it, it's not very squishy. It's got a great flavor and it's nice and white on the inside here. This is an absolute delicious treat. A lot of work to get into, but the great thing about walnuts is you get a lot more meat for the effort. And what I will like to do is I will gather all my nut meat here. I'll put it on a tray and then I'll put my oven to about 350 degrees and I'll put my nuts in the oven and I'll leave the oven door slightly open to let the humidity come out and then I like to dry these and then I just store them in a jar. And uh, once I have enough, I'll use them for cooking, maybe make banana bread using my acorn flour and uh, just an absolute delicious treat.